Take on air sample. Launch surveillance drone. Launch surveillance drone. Receiving video transmission now, sir. Yoshizumi. I think he's asleep, sir. He was up half the night working on that theory of his. That earthquake prediction rocket? Yes, sir, I believe so. What a crock. Worried about a massive disaster, is he? Well, you'd better give him a call. I don't suppose he'll be seeing this site again. Yoshizumi to the control room. Yoshizumi to the control room. Yoshizumi reporting. Captain McLeod. On a more positive note, gang, well, let's not get so damn heavy about this. The Japanese seem to have licked their smog problem at last, don't they? That will be quite enough, Major Carter. I am sorry. Look here, Major. What are you riding in for? We haven't room for that sort of thing down here, you know? Jones, you haven't got room for a whole hell of a lot of nothing down here. Pardon. Pardon. Captain. I'm slow. Well. Captain, the analysis of the air sample from the outside environment is complete. Result? Positive. The virus is still quite active. Retrieve the drone. Eject the air sample. Captain, I ask of you, do not eject the sample. That's impossible, Dr. Latour. You want us to keep that, that thing with us? Take it back? It's quite out of the question. I beg of you, reconsider, Captain. You're thinking only of the short-term risk. I'd like to think of no risk at all. With a little time, I can study its characteristics. There is no danger as long as we keep it isolated. 
Just how the hell do you isolate a virus aboard a submarine, Doctor? Captain, this submarine, it is powered by a nuclear reactor. Is there no danger to us from the radioactivity of the core? No, of course not. We are completely shielded from the... I accept your expertise in this matter. Will you not accept mine? Captain, what choice do we have but at least to try? Retrieve the drone, secure air sample in isolation. Retrieve drone, secure air sample in isolation. Retrieve drone, secure air sample in isolation. That's it for whom? Ed for Rome. It'd be different if we had home to return to now, wouldn't it? Ed for Antarctic, it should be. 9,000 miles is the crow goes. Except there aren't no crows. It'll be Christmas by the time we get back. Christmas.
professor. Schließen Sie das Mensch, er der Kaffee kalt wird. Ich muss heute noch 60 Kilometer fahren. Es tut mir leid, Herr Professor. Es ist ziemlich schlechtes Wetter. Ich habe keine Wahl. Meine Schwester ist krank. Tut mir leid. Bitte, fahren Sie sehr vorsichtig. Vielen Dank. Nice to see you. Dreadfully cold, no? Here, warm yourself. I trust everything is in order. Contents are to be delivered directly to Dr. Leisenau of the Viral Research Institute at Zurich. Transport it exactly as it is. Under no circumstances take it up with the dry ice packing. Under no circumstances allow the dry ice to run out. He said perfectly, absolutely clear. I understand, Professor. Is that the right word? Dr. Leisenau is, in my opinion, the leading authority in the world today on the subject of viral infections. And the test data, the documentation? I had enough trouble getting this specimen out of the lab. You expect me to take this to Dr. Leisenau with no proof? No idea of its characteristics, its properties? Here, Dr. Leisenau, here is a germ. Fix it, please. It is more than a germ. It is a weapon. MM88 is an accident. It is a Frankenstein monster masquerading as a virus. MM88. Soon after it was found, we could take DNA apart and reassemble it in different ways. An American geneticist developed this MM88. When we heard of its characteristics, we decided to borrow some of it. What characteristics? Essentially, it is a mimic. A what? A mimic attaches itself to existing viruses, such as polio, influenza, etc increasing both the toxicity level and the reproductive level of the host disease. In other words, it hits so hard and multiplies so fast, it simply overwhelms any vaccine known. Oh! Excuse. You have a cold? No, it's nothing. If I were to open this ampule to the air, you would be dead within three days. <laughs> it is no laughing matter. Men, women, children, livestock as well, birds, dogs and cats even. All vertebrate life on Earth without exception is susceptible. 
Unless a way is found to neutralize this monster, we are left with a doomsday weapon. Which means a weapon that would never be used. By a rational man. Any student of history can tell you that a rational mind is not always a prerequisite for a position of power. Very good, Professor. You have done well. In five days, a bank account will be opened in your name in Brazil. 50,000 pounds will be deposited to that account. Do you think I did this for money? I want you to get this virus to Dr. Lysenau, nothing more. And oh, she's in for hot dog! Certain Professor Krauser was hit? Yes. Just as well, I suppose. He wouldn't have been very happy if he found out we were not representing the good Dr. Lysenau, after all. We gotta go higher! Let's do our turbulence! No, we'll be picked up by radar. Keep hugging the cliffs! It's not safe! We're too heavy! Don't worry. We have plenty of ballast to get rid of if we have to. Come in. Director Rogers. Dr. Meyer, you have a visitor. How are you, Ed? You busy? No, no, I just, uh, I wasn't expecting you till tomorrow. <laughs> I came by to check on your progress. Well, I have a few things to do, gentlemen, so if you'll excuse me. Did you get it back? No. A scientist named Krauss was making discreet inquiries to the Swiss about something that sounded like MM88. I sent in some of my people posing as Swiss. They never came out. Well, send in some more, damn it! It's vitally important to find out who stole that virus. My only link was Krauss. The East Germans are saying that he committed suicide. So MM88 is still out there, and we don't know where. That's why it is imperative for you to develop a vaccine against it immediately. There's not a vaccine in the world that can stop it. Not likely to be one either. At extremely low temperatures, the virus is completely dormant. But at minus 10 degrees centigrade, it begins to reproduce itself. By minus 3 degrees centigrade, its reproductive rate is increased by a factor of 100. Above zero, it starts growing at a horrendous rate, reaching its peak infectivity at about 5 degrees centigrade, at which time its reproductive rate, the speed with which it multiplies, reaches massive proportions. Its reproductive rate is now something on the order of two billion times greater than what it was at minus 10. Look at this, and look at this, and look at this. I'm scared to death of this thing. It's not just a, a vaccine you want to develop from this little monster of ours, is it? I don't know what you're talking about. I know how the system works, Colonel. 
develop part of a weapon here, another part over there, the trigger someplace else again, and nobody involved even knows what the hell they're working on until it's all put together. Go on. Militarily, a vaccine would be a very useful defensive element. And that is all you're being asked to develop. Come off it, Colonel. Why is Columbia being asked to do a study on MM88's resistance to extreme heat? You are developing a weapon system based on MM88, aren't you? You're a fool. For God's sake, why? Ed. At this moment, we do not have a creditable deterrent in the United States arsenal. At this moment, we are capable not only of reducing each other to rubble, but of reducing the rubble to rubble. We were. Before we installed the automatic reaction system, the ARS. So how does that leave us defenseless? The Soviets installed the same system. Now, neither side can employ their missiles even if they want to. So this, this so-called disarmament treaty of President Richardson's is more of his political showboating. We are back to square one, unless we can develop a new weapon system fast. Oh, Christ, not again. Why can't you people ever leave it be? Are the Russians going to leave it be? What's with him? trouble. He's figured it out. Take a look. My God. He's going to blow the whistle to Senator Barclay's Defense Oversight Committee. What do you propose to do? I think you should send him over to uh, Letterman this afternoon for a routine physical. Hello? This is AJ1RL. I copy you. 
What is your call sign? Over. This is VK0CC. Ahab from Mawson Station. Over. 隣のオーストラリアです。Hello, neighbor. What have you heard from outside? Over. Just for a couple of minutes to some doctor in Uganda. He said whatever it was, Central Africa was hit bad. Not just the people. Most of the wildlife as well. Even the elephants. Over. Wildlife too? Yeah. Imagine an elephant with the flu. One sneeze would break its bloody neck, I reckon. Just a minute. Hello. This is Dr. Yamauchi speaking. Could you please explain, as much as possible, the characteristics the Ugandan doctor described? Over. Well, all he said was it started out like a simple cold or, or flu mostly, and then quickly turned into pneumonia. And there were symptoms of other diseases as well, but he didn't think it was any of those things. He thought it was something else. Something else? So that's what I'm doing. 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 ないでくれ。はい。お前にも諦めるな。大地のことは気にならんのか。おい。あっちでこってるんだ。俺の女房の友達ですごい美人だ。それがどうだろうね、旦さ。子供ができたの。あなたが南極に行ってる間に生まれることになる。嘘よ。でも本当だとしてもあなたには関係ないわね。私に何があったって行くんでしょ。<笑> いくよ。地震と南極。それがあなたの全てだもの。やっぱり別れましょう。私たち。嘘だって言ったでしょ。どっちみちあなたには関係ないわ。ごめんね。こんなこと言うつもりじゃなかった。本当は笑って送ってあげるつもりだった。元気でいってらっしゃい。さよなら。
のり子さんじゃない？よしこさん、どうしたの？真っ青よ。なんでもない。ちょっと疲れただけ。あきらちゃんどうしたの？風邪？ワクチン。大変だったわ。朝から並んで。そう。のり子さん。忙しくて無理しちゃったから吉住さん知ってたのかわいそうなことしちゃって一人で育てるつもりだったのに「Raging epidemic of the Italian flu is sowing seeds of fear and panic throughout the world」A severe shortage of vaccine of every kind is reported in almost all countries. Everywhere, there are ugly confrontations. Martial law is the order of the day, but civil disorder is escalated with widespread damage to private and public property and rising death tolls in a number of countries. In the United Kingdom, Spain, France, West Germany, and Japan. The United States is no exception. For the past several days on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., mass demonstrations of tens of thousands of people are daily events. This morning, the National Guard and the police attempted to restore order, only to inflame the angry mood of the vast crowd, demanding effective vaccines. Reports of bloody encounters continue to stream in. President Richardson's television appeal to the nation, asking for calm and restraint, has had no appreciable effect. No one dares to say when order can be restored. Even now, in Washington, authorities cannot maintain order. It's enough! And everywhere in the country, there is confusion, chaos, and disruption. What vaccine? All right. <clears throat> How long will it take to, uh, to manufacture this vaccine in quantity? Mr. President, we have not even been able to isolate the cause. The virus, if it is a virus, it's like the common cold. It is everywhere. It is nowhere. I'd like to say at this point, Mr. President, that HHS might have been in a better position to develop the crash program if its budget hadn't been slashed against the specific wishes of Congress. Damn it, Senator, I don't have to hear that from you. What do you mean? There is no vaccine? <laughs> then what is it that we're giving the police and fire department personnel, the essential services, the military alert crews, if not a vaccine? It's just that we don't have enough for the general populace. Isn't that right? We have a vaccine of sorts. We, we've put together a soup of every flu-related vaccine we know. Its effect leaves something to be desired. In fact, it's more of a placebo than anything else. You gave me a goddamn placebo? We are doing our best. Mr. President, my apologies for being late, but I have been gathering the latest intelligence estimates of our situation. Yeah. This shows where this Italian flu first broke out and the routes by which it has spread. Here we have a breakdown of victims. Alive, yellow, dead, black, according to region. As of this morning, Mr. President, I would like to point out the very real possibility 
that we might not have just an epidemic in our hands. We may have a case of germ warfare. From where? Hmm? What source? Every country on this chart has massive casualties. Can you explain that? As far as we know, some of our information is quite sketchy. Still, the most suspect country should be obvious. Do you have any hard evidence to support this theory? We are working on it. In the meantime, Mr. President, as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, I must request that we go on to a stage one alert, including the activation of the ARS network. A nuclear strike, General. All right, stage one alert, if that makes you feel any better, but the automatic reaction system is aimed at the Soviet Union and no one else leaves us no flexibility at all. How flexible are we going to be when Soviet missiles are incoming? Well, the only thing that's incoming are the germs, General. The Soviets must be made aware of the fact that they cannot take advantage of this situation. All right, that, that, that's a point to consider. Yes, one moment. Mr. President, the Kremlin. This is President Richardson. What? Yes, uh, <clears throat> yes, I, I understand. Well, the uh, message was uh, brief enough. Their chief of state died this morning of the Italian flu. As far as we know, I am star fool.
どんな終わり方をするかだ。新が途絶えて何日になる。今日で二十日ですね。ひどいことになってるらしいですね。俺は信じるやぞ。たった三ヶ月でそこで日本が滅びちまうなんて。そんなバカなことあるか。そんなバカな。タツさん、今の声。ヒュアルザステーション。どっかこじらえましたか。This is H J one R F。This is AJ1RL, Showa Station. Tobi, come in. Tobi, over. Can anybody hear me? My name is Tobi. Tobi, I hear you. I hear you. Can anybody hear me? I'm at the Anderson Ranch outside of Santa Fe. This is Dandy's radio. Can anybody hear me? ダメだマイクのスイッチを引っ張らせたよ使い方知らないんですねトビーレッツゴーオフザマイクスイッチアスタユースピーク Sit, gentlemen, leaders of the most <laughs> powerful and advanced nation on the face of the earth. Here we sit. Damn it! There must be something we can do about it. Something. Mr. President, has the plague been identified yet? Senator, we don't know whether we're dealing with one plague germ or six. We don't even know where it came from or how it is being transmitted. Maybe we've been looking in the wrong direction. 
We have looked in every direction, Senator. Tell us something about Operation Phoenix, General Garland. Phoenix? What is Operation Phoenix? Just a, uh, just a paper study. Oh? One of several options being studied in purely theoretical terms. Mr. President, nothing more. Maybe a little bit more, General. What are we talking about? Operation Phoenix was a top secret military study of a new weapon system. There are many such studies. It goes with the job. New weapons, new studies, new alternatives. A biological weapon system. It was a paper study. It was an active research project involving the genetic manipulation of existing pathogenic viruses. It was theoretical. New strains were not just studied. They were created in the laboratory. Under completely controlled conditions, I assure you, Mr. President. One strain, MM88, was stolen and never recovered. And the President was never told about it. Now, I'd like to know why. Colonel Rankin, get in here this minute. <coughs> Colonel Rankin, Operation Phoenix was your baby. MM88. Was such a strain developed? Yes, sir. Was any of it stolen? No, sir, but it wouldn't have made any difference anyway. Why not? MM88 was a failure. It was benign. He's lying. Senator, I have had enough accusation for one afternoon. Now, I demand to know the source of this horrible slander. Sir, this man is a paranoid schizophrenic. I can vouch for that. Well, there you have it. Rumors from the funny farm. This is Dr. Baldwin's report. Dr. Meyer is incurably sane, but it took us a little while to find that out because Colonel Rankin had put him away. Colonel, why was he committed? To keep him from passing information about Operation Phoenix to my subcommittee. Rankin, I could have you shot. You have been relieved of your duties. <clears throat> uh, tell me something. Is this Italian flu actually MM88? I'm sure of it, sir. Sir, hmm? I fully support you in this last-ditch effort, but I must stress the importance of a strong military posture at this moment. Again, I urge a stage one alert, including the ARS activation. General, get out of my sight. Mr. President. I said, get out of my sight. Gentlemen, we will place a lid of complete secrecy on this situation. On the contrary, sir, we need to enlist the aid of scientists from all over the world. Out of the question. But, Mr. President... Top secret. Now, what do you need? Yes. has come down with the cold. What do you need, Doctor? What 
do you need?
てごらんそうねこれ飲むと寒くなくなるの<笑>どうしたのなぜか This may be the last sunset we'll ever see. If we only had a little more time. <laughs> Those were Dr. Meyer's last words. God, how many entire civilizations have sputtered out with those words. Our speech writers are so fond of having a say about history. Those who can't remember the past. 
I condemn to repeat it. Those of us who can. I wanted my name to be entered into the history books. But I wanted it to be for something meaningful, something lasting. What could I have done that would have made the slightest damn bit of difference? What, uh, what could I have done? Maybe it will snow. <laughs> Might give us a little more time. <coughs> How? Meyer said that the virus remains dormant in cold temperatures. <laughs> well, it's not going to snow, Senator. Besides, it has to get damn cold. Antarctica. Palmer Station. Oh, come on, there must be some. Yes, Mr. President. Get me Palmer Station. snowed in all this time. <coughs> you and the research crew could be flown down. You'd be safe there. We'll make it. God willing. <coughs> Not we, Mr. President. <coughs> you. <coughs> you represent the nation. <coughs> the government must continue. <coughs> This is the President of the United States. Uh, this is Admiral Conway here, Mr. President. I would like the entire American continent to hear what I have to say. Has the sickness hit your station yet? No, sir. There is no sign of any illness here. And the other stations? There are no reported illnesses at any of the stations, and we are in more or less regular contact. How bad is it, Mr. President? Pass me through to the other Antarctic bases. All of them, sir? All of them, Admiral Conway. Right away, Mr. President. Attention, attention, all stations. Please stand by for an important message from the President of the United States. All personnel, all stations must repeat, must listen to the following message. Please stand by. Great regret, personal son, as well as the position of the government of the United States, that I officially confirm what most of you already know. The world has been beset by a horrible plague, and now we are unable to devise an effective vaccine. The United States has sustained. It sustained casualties of the greatest magnitude. No country has escaped a similar fate. We do know something about this 
virus. We know this virus remains dormant under sub-zero conditions. For this reason, you in Antarctica have not been affected. Uh, do not leave your sanctuary. Do not allow those from the outside to enter. Under no conditions, try to return. I uh, offer you no solutions, no hope, other than that somehow you, you may prevail. This time, try to work it out together, please. Please. And may God bless you all. Mr. President, I formally request that you, under this authority granted by Congress and by the Constitution of the United States of America, meeting your responsibility to defend this great land against all enemies, internal and external, give the order to put our retaliatory forces on full alert, stage one, including the activation of the ARS. You are a fool, General. There's nobody left.
そういうわけにはいかん南極会議まであと5日しかないパーマー基地に着くまでは強行軍が続くぞ南極会議には11カ国全部揃うんですかああ揃うはずだ生き残った俺たちの将来を決める会議だからな遅れるわけにはいかん時間もないし歩くか歩くってパーマ基地までまだ千キロもありますよいくら俺でもそんな無茶は言わないよしかしここまで来ればノルウェー基地が近いはずだあそこまで行けばなんとかなるだろう Please, listen to me. Open the door. We are from the Japanese wintering team. It's all right. It's all right. What's happened here? We were just sitting there, not talking. The radio man shot himself. Then everyone went mad. My husband pulled out a gun and pointed it at me.
ran. But he just came after me. I closed and locked the door. And he just kept banging. Then someone shot him. ここに残ってくれないか。俺はどうしても会議に間に合わせなきゃならん。と言って出産間近のあの人を一緒に連れて行くのはとても無理だ。独身の君にはすまんが頼むよ。わかりました。なんとかやっています。こんな時に南極で
I have just received a notification from my colleague, that a Norwegian survivor has just given birth to a baby girl. <sighs> Rather unfortunate being born into this situation. Not necessarily, Doctor. That will be up to us. If there was still a world out there, I'd be a father by now. Has she chosen a name for the child? Gree. Gree. I like the sound. Gree in Norwegian is a word meaning the first light of the sun, the dawn of a new day. Yes? He has a message. A message? From whom? From the Federal Council of Antarctica. I've never heard of them. And neither did anyone else before today. We are here. We must have a government. One of their first official actions was to issue a proclamation. Welcoming Gree to the new world and uh, wishing her every happiness. Every happiness. Also, they want to know if the council can serve as a collective godfather. How nice of them. was attacked, and it cannot be allowed to happen again. My dear, I'm sure no one wishes to minimize the seriousness of what happened. However, we are dealing with the human animal's natural reaction to the threat of extinction, which is to reproduce, to propagate the species. It is regrettable, but inevitable. This is not the point. If this council cannot take care of their eight women, well then, gentlemen, this whole thing is just a joke. Yeah, of course there's truth in what you say. We must protect our women. I... Oh, let's face it. What we really need is a completely new attitude toward human sexuality. In a community of 855 men and eight women, Conventional one-to-one -one relationships between men and women will not be possible. Well, uh, that may be so. But I agree with Dr. Latour that we should be concerned with the instinct for survival and think of brothers and sisters for little Gree. Indeed. And the question now must be, how do we go about it? Dr. Olich? Well, we really don't know how to go about it just yet. Although the problem itself is certainly clear enough. Women have become our most valuable natural resource. And as has just been pointed out, one-to-one -one relationships are no longer possible. This means that each woman, however reluctantly, will have to accommodate more than one man. Of course, we will have to go against deep personal feelings. And this is an extremely serious matter. But somehow we must find the will to suppress our instincts. And that is what troubles me the most. Can we? Can we control our instincts with reason? <sighs> Unless we can, there is no future. 
the human race will die out. Sylvia, from the bottom of my heart, I wish that I could answer your question. Admiral? Sorry, sir. We just picked up a submarine distress signal. Sir, they're on their way here. They wish permission to disembark. Palmer Station? No, sir, to the Soviet station. We intercepted the message. It's the Soviet sub T-232. They are requesting emergency assistance, sir. And their condition? Acting Captain of Soviet Submarine T-232. Ensign Smirnov, this is Admiral Conway, Chairman of the Federal Council of Antarctica. We understand that some of your men are injured. No injuries, Admiral. We have illness. <coughs> My men need provisions and medical attention. What is the nature of the illness? Italian flu. In that case, it is my duty to inform you with great reluctance that the Federal Council of Antarctica refuses you permission to land. What are you telling me? Ensign Smirnov, this is Dr. Borodinov, commander of the Soviet Antarctic Wintering Team. Ensign Smirnov, doctor, requesting permission to land. Smirnov, it is not possible that you should land. You would infect us all. You must understand. Dr. Borodinov, my men must leave this boat. We need rest. We need medical attention. Can you hear me? Doctor, can you hear me? We will land. You will not land. Who is this speaking? Her Majesty's nuclear attack submarine, Nereid. Captain McLeod at your service. This is not your concern, English. We have the most profound sympathy for your situation, Ensign Smirnov. But surely you realize you cannot be allowed to disembark. I have a responsibility to my men. You have a higher responsibility. The city. Много айсбергов. Тяжело засечь. There is nothing more to say, Captain McLeod. Captain McLeod, what is your present position? Sufficiently close, I should say. Then, Captain, do what you have to do. Havistan! Load number four two with Sabra. Target range six thousand yards. Set range six thousand yards. Set. Fire.
Your tight little island remains secure for now, Admiral Conway. Farewell. Captain McLeod, we owe you our thanks. Where will you go? Like the Flying Dutchman, we'll just sail on. You chaps still have a good shot at it. Don't let us down. Captain McLeod. Yes, sir. How long have you been on station? Since February. That's winter back there. Captain, I want you to answer this next question very carefully. Are you or any of your men infected? No, sir, we're not. Must be unanimous. Captain McLeod, would you care to come aboard, sir? Yes, sir. I believe we would. Good. We look forward to it. Stand by to surface. Stand by to surface. Stand by to surface. Dr. Latour not joining us this evening? No, he just went back to his laboratory to work on the vaccine against the virus. <sighs> Was I wrong, I wonder, to allow Latour to bring that viral sample here to our sanctuary? Oh, that's hard to say. Mind you, if a vaccine can be developed, Dr. Latour is the man to do it. <laughs> he told me so himself. Surely they must have tried out there. They must have tried. Oh, my God. Goodness. <laughs> you are 
tu babi. Hey, Major Carter, could you tell something? Who do you think the kid looks like, him or me? Me, you twit. It's obvious, isn't it? Oh, come on, Major Carter, which one, basically speaking? What is it, a boy or a girl? Well, what difference does that make? Because if it's a boy, it will partly look like you. And if it's a girl? Then it will partly look like its mother. Now, would you two please leave me alone? Thank you. She's beautiful. <laughs> Excuse me. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. From Gree. From Gree? Please thank you for me. Thank you yourself. What's the matter? Don't you like children? There was a time, perhaps, when I did not. I don't understand. Sometimes I cannot express myself very well. Eric? Yes? I believe we have an appointment. I could come back later if you like. No, there's no need to come back later. You sent for me, Admiral Conway? Yes, Dr. Yoshizumi. Would you come in, please? It appears we may have a small problem here. Would you mind explaining what this seismic map means? I did it on my own time. Yes, of course. But would you explain it, please, in layman's terms? Well, out here is the Baltimore Canyon where offshore oil drilling had recently started. In my field of earthquake prediction, I became extremely interested in this situation. But uh, that is not an earthquake-prone area. You, you're right, Captain Lopez. But uh, I was concerned about what might happen when the topped oil in this area was brought out the tremendous weight of the sea pressing down 
it could lead to a tectonic movement of great magnitude. In this particular area, there are very steep gradients between the Baltimore Canyon and Appalachian Formation, which could result in a very critical condition. What is the expected magnitude of this earth tremor if it occurs? Between 8.6 and uh, 9 on the Richter scale. You place the epicenter here? Yes, sir, within a 100 mile radius of that point. That means that Washington, D.C. could be severely affected? Yes. Doctor, let me ask you, could this shock be as great as a nuclear explosion? Well, the rapid vertical movement of the shock pattern would be like the shock wave of a nuclear explosion. I should emphasize, however, uh, this earthquake will occur in the eastern seaboard area, not here. When would you expect this earthquake to hit? Within a month. Uh, Major Carter, I think it's time you told everybody what you've already told me. Gentlemen, by way of explanation, Major Carter is a former staff member with the Defense Intelligence Agency, and he acted as liaison to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The United States has in place a retaliatory missile system called the ARS, Automatic Reaction System. An earthquake of the magnitude indicated by Dr. Yajizumi would trigger the ARS. Now, the United States military was very closely coordinated with that of the United Kingdom. Captain McLeod, sir. Major Carter is quite correct, gentlemen. About a year ago, in September, while on station, we on the Nerea did indeed receive the activation signal. It's rather surprising, I might add, because we assumed there was no one left alive in Washington to send it. I think it's imperative that you gentlemen hear some cold facts from my Soviet colleague. Captain Nevsky. Shto. The first missile to hit Russian soil will set off our entire retaliatory force. Our system was activated over a year ago. But that's not all, I'm afraid. What do you mean? The opinion was held at one time that the United States was planning the construction of a secret base here at Palmer Station. I believe that Palmer Station is targeted. What? That is insane! The United States had no particular monopoly on idiots. But this is, is impossible! How long are we to be haunted by our past? There is one thing we could do. Send someone to Washington to disarm the damn thing. But what about the virus? If you're right about the earthquake, what choice have we?
This is stupid. Yes! This is stupid! Admiral, I'm going myself. It's all right, Doctor. Major Carter is correct. It must be him. He will need help. You're not going, pal. You cannot do this alone. If I was going to take someone with me, which I'm not, it sure as hell wouldn't be you. Why? Look, Doctor, have you ever handled explosives? Yes, many times. In seismic experiments. Well, even if you had handled explosives, you'd slow me down. No. I don't want to hurt your feelings, Doctor, but you're not physically tough enough for the job. I'm sorry. Go on back home now, do you understand? Now get up! I suggest you get out of my way and get on home. No. Life is wonderful. <laughs> hey, Yoshizumi. How do you say life is wonderful in Japanese?
Gentlemen, a toast is in order. You leave early tomorrow morning to your success. 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 Quickly, the last few days have gone. If only we could turn back the clock. How many days will it take to reach Washington? Ten days, I should say. Eight women and children and a skeleton crew will get underway in the icebreaker first thing in the morning. If worst comes to worst, they should still be out of range when the missiles hit. Assuming the missiles are accurate enough to hit the base. <clears throat> there is no question of our missiles not hitting the target. That's very reassuring. And what about the rest of you? The rest of us will hope for the best. Sure. Major Carter, I have been saving this for a very special occasion. I really shouldn't take it, sir, and drink it by myself, but I will. <laughs> if Carter's going to get drunk tonight, you don't want to be in the same room with him. Use my room. No. Please. Thank you. Get on. Qué grande que viene el río, qué grande se va la mar. Si lo aumenta el llanto mío, como grande no ha de Como grande no ha de estar Río, 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 río Devolverme el amor mío Devolverme el amor mío Que me canso de Dark there. See that? Dark there too. 
the child would have had that way. Oh, God! No more this in time. Bonjour. Doctor. I trust you will forgive this last minute intrusion, but without going into boring detail, I believe, I believe, mind you, that I have developed a vaccine against the virus. But how? Well, to uh, simplify, it appears that high levels of radiation introduced into a living virus cell create an effective antibody. Of course, uh, I cannot force anyone to become a guinea pig. But uh, under the circumstances... What the hell? should be immediate. To minimize the danger to the crew, do not inject yourselves until just before you leave the submarine. If it does not work, please report your symptoms as long as you can. We will do our best.
you chaps all right? Fine, thank you. He certainly sleeps a lot, doesn't he? I too sleep a great deal. We were speaking of it yesterday. We have never slept so much before. I know. Oh, good morning, Captain. When do we get to Washington? Well, you got uh, five days more to sleep, Major? That long? It's still within your deadline, is it not? Oh. Y yes. But uh, earthquakes do not always occur on schedule. Oh. Maybe you should try it before, sir. Got any more surprises for us, Doctor? Take a look. Major Carter, everything you need has been launched with the life run. Thank you, Lieutenant Commander Jones. OK, we're going to be on. Good luck. Thank you. And save a couple of beers for us. Real? We're American. <laughs> I don't care as long as they're cold. Babe. 
Watch out. Are you afraid of heights? Sometimes. Well, can you handle this? I must. We are running out of time. All right. Let's go. Do anything for you. Major Carter. Go. Go.
It's too late. Major Carter, it's too late. Somewhere in there, eight. This is your sister, Miss Speaking. Over. This is near yet. Goodbye. We were too late. Save yourself, see if you can. We're on promo station to evacuate. We tried. We tried. We know you did. Yes, she's me. There's just one more thing. Tell Dr. Latour, his vaccine seems to have worked. In case that still matters.
Don't you understand? Winter is coming. We have very little food left. We should head north now. What's the point? The virus would kill us anyway. We've all had injections of my vaccine against the virus, which is why we survived the last four years. Besides, with all the radiation released by the bombs, virus is probably no longer a threat. It doesn't matter. My child is dead. I'm tired. It doesn't matter.
Just remember when they're done. Me too.